So work is boring sometimes and it's like tedious and it's hard and we really want to know like what's important and we want it to be more fun. Fun at work is considered positive these days, which is good. Uh, it's tempting to use gamification because gamification make, can make some things fun. Like uh, Try Hack Me makes it a lot more fun to work on computer security because it gamifies it. Recommend. Um, however, when we take gamification techniques like adding a score, achievements, competition, and we apply those to our team, it's pretty destructive because if we're in competition with our teammates, then we're disincentivized from helping each other. And we're, we're, our focus is narrowed to whatever the heck the score is. Maybe it's Jira tickets closed this week. We get so focused on that that we don't, uh, we don't collaborate well inside or outside of the team. And we don't um, prepare for the future by keeping the code in good shape. Gamification in software teams is nasty. It's not an appropriate use of those techniques. But we can learn some stuff from games. Here's the trick. Gamification takes scores and achievements and competition. It's taking these superficial characteristics of a lot of games. Not all games have those three things, but a lot of them do. It takes those superficial characteristics and slaps them onto someplace else. This works okay with Fitbit and counting your steps, although there's some weird incentives there too. Um, these superficial characteristics aren't appropriate in every situation. So instead, let's step back, stop copying what properties most games happen to have, and start looking at the process of game design. What is a game designer thinking when they create a game that gives the players a good experience? Because when you play a well-designed game, you get an experience of flow, like you're immersed in it, right? It holds your attention. I want that at work. And when you play a good game that's like multiplayer, you make friends with, with the other players. Um, some games, that's not true. I mean, there's, there's like League of Legends and, and ones where you wind up fighting with your teammates. But um, in the games that I like, the cooperative ones, my favorite is Genshin Impact. Playing with random people is fun because everyone's nice because there's no PVP and the game is set up. So really all you can do is help each other. Worst case, you pick somebody's flowers. It's fine, they grow back in two days. Uh, so this positive social experience, I want that in my team. And, and most games have the property of as you play them, you get better at them. Some you even learn like other useful skills. Uh, chess can help you to t think more logically and methodically, but mostly just playing chess carefully makes you better at chess. And I want to get better at my job while I'm doing my job. Uh, so game designers work all these things into the design of the game, and they do that by working in the medium of agency. They set, game designers set up goals, rules, and abilities, and then the players choose to aim for that goal, to get more victory points um, with, the, with the designated abilities. Maybe it's, it's Scrabble, right? And I choose to care about the points in order to get the experience of playing the game. I choose to get points by making words with my letters on my turn. I choose the additional rules that it has to be uh, like a lowercase dictionary word and every, every um, intersection that I create with my letters also has to make a word and it can't go off the edge of the board and all these other restrictions. We take those on because the net result is a particular experience, an experience of concentration and flow, um, an experience of a, a positive social interactions with the other players, and an experience of getting better at Scrabble. So let's take those and look at our software teams because on our software teams, uh, we also adopt a particular agency. Um, maybe, maybe I, it's not like my wife mission to build a retail point of sale software or to improve it and add this particular report, but I choose to take this as a goal. It is, it is a goal of mine to make this software better. Uh, and I take this on with my team and we're going to use the abilities we have. We have some knowledge of the, the, programming language, we have access to the code, we have some knowledge about the business domain, 
Um, and we have tools that like our IDEs and our logs and our deployment systems, we have all these abilities and we choose to follow certain rules. I mean, our goal is to like, um, maybe add a feature, add a report to this point of sale system. The fastest way to do that would be to log into production and update the PHP. But we don't do that. We follow rules um, that we have chosen for ourselves uh, that turn into enabling constraints, stuff like source control and, um, and a code review or pairing, multiple eyes on the code, um, automated testing and uh, TDD. We choose uh, to take on these constraints because they help us later. We've learned that they make the game more fun over a period of time or the work process in this case. Uh, right. So those, there's parallels here between games and our work in teams. Uh, and we can choose our goals, rules, and abilities such that uh, we get that, that feeling of flow. If we have all the abilities to meet our goals, but also a challenge if something gets boring, automate it. There's always plenty of challenges in software development. Um, but if we have all the abilities that we need to reach our goals, then we can do it and we can dive in and make something work. And that is so satisfying, way more satisfying than competition. Um, and then like the rules and abilities interact to form the social experience. For instance, asynchronous blocking pull request review sets us against each other. I'm trying to fix this bug. You're trying to enforce the rules. Can we make a robot enforce the rules or like maybe synchronously work together to get the test cases in the state that you want them, that we would all like, but you will have the knowledge to do it and we can work together, great. So how we choose to do things, whether that code review is synchronous or asynchronous, affects the social interactions in the team. And finally, uh, let's see, we have the abilities and rules. Those interact for who we become later. Like when we choose enabling constraints, like reproducible builds, that increases our ability to do, say, roll forward or roll backwards, uh, to do repeated deploys. If we're not careful, the natural trajectory of software is always ossification. It's always getting harder to change because we've got feature on top of feature on top of feature and every one comes with the invisible requirement of, and everything else still works. But if we're careful, if we choose to take a step back and think about refactoring, we're careful with our naming, sometimes we break out a service, sometimes we, we take the time to upgrade our framework, um, the constraints that we put on ourselves and the abilities that we create for ourselves, such as continuous deployment, uh, these determine whether we can get more powerful as we go. In a game, we call this engine building. You can look that up if you don't know what it is. It's giving ourselves the abilities that we need to do better at our work or get more points in the game, and then using those abilities to move forward. Uh, so these principles of game design apply directly to uh, software development. And there's, there's a lot more in game design that we can apply to team design. And this is a form of looking at games, looking at our work and copying the questions, not the answers. The answers are those superficial characteristics of gamification that don't work. I don't want competition in my team. I don't want to reduce to a single score. But the questions that game designers ask how can I match the goals and the abilities? How can I make sure that in Mario, the chasms are just wide enough that you can jump over them? And then as you get better at the game, the platforms start to move and the challenge level increases uh, along with your abilities. How can I get that kind of flow? How can I have people on the same side all the time instead of in competition? How can I make sure we keep getting better at supporting capabilities in the software so that we can support more and more with the same team. Uh, yeah, so gamification, no. Game design, yes. And also game design is fun to read about, win. <laughs>